Welcome to the third section of metabolism. In this section, we'll be discussing pyruvate metabolism. Let's get started. This is the metabolic map provided in section one of metabolism. In this video, we'll be focusing on pyruvate metabolism. You can see pyruvate right here. Notice that pyruvate is a central molecule in the map. This is fitting because pyruvate is a versatile substrate, which can be shunted to and from many different pathways. Let's zoom up on our map and take a closer look at pyruvate metabolism. This figure is from section three of metabolism and provides a good overview of pyruvate metabolism. You need to know that pyruvate can be converted into four different molecules. First, pyruvate can be converted into alanine. This is through the enzyme alanine aminotransferase, or ALT. The alanine can then be taken back to the liver and converted into glucose. So the liver and then glucose. This process is called the alanine cycle. Second, pyruvate can be converted into oxaloacetate. This occurs in the liver through the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. The oxaloacetate can then be used for gluconeogenesis. Third, pyruvate can be converted to acetyl-CoA, which occurs under aerobic conditions through the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. The acetyl-CoA can then be used in the TCA cycle, fatty acid synthesis, or ketoacid metabolism. Finally, pyruvate can be converted into lactate, which occurs under anaerobic conditions through the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. The lactate can then go back to the liver and be converted back into glucose via gluconeogenesis. This process is called the Cori cycle. Notice that pyruvate carboxylase requires vitamin B7 as a cofactor. Also notice that alanine aminotransferase requires vitamin B6. Lactate dehydrogenase requires vitamin B3 and pyruvate dehydrogenase requires several cofactors, which you can see right here. We'll talk more about this in a minute. Okay, let's do a question. Researchers are studying the regulation of glycolysis in skeletal muscle tissue during exercise in healthy mice, which are group A, and mice with a knockout mutation for lactate dehydrogenase, which are mice from group B. They discover that the mice from group B have slower rates of glycolysis. What intermediate in the glycolytic pathway likely accumulates as a result of this mutation? Okay, so mice from group A are healthy and mice from group B have a lactate dehydrogenase deficiency. We're asked how this would affect the glycolytic pathway and what substrate would likely accumulate. The answer to the question is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Let's pull up the pathway for glycolysis to answer this question. We can see glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate right here in the pathway. Let me explain why this would accumulate. Lactate dehydrogenase, which you can see right here, normally generates NAD during the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. So you can see NADH is going to NAD. A lactate dehydrogenase deficiency would result in an accumulation of NADH. Likewise, it would result in a depletion of NAD+. In glycolysis, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This step requires NAD which you can see right here. Because NAD levels are limited in the mice with a lactate dehydrogenase deficiency, this reaction in glycolysis cannot occur. So mice from group B have decreased lactate dehydrogenase activity. This results in decreased NAD, which inhibits or decreases the conversion of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. As a result, the levels of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate would likely accumulate. Okay, let's move on and talk more about pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is actually a complex that consists of multiple enzymes and requires several cofactors for optimal activity. These include thymine lipoic acid, CoA, FAD, and NAD. You can see all of these right here. These can be remembered with the mnemonic TLC for Nancy. Notice how the T corresponds with thiamine, the L corresponds with lipoic acid, the C corresponds with CoA, F corresponds with FAD, and N corresponds with NAD. The B vitamins are incredibly high yield and there is a separate video for this topic, but take some time to commit this to memory. Okay, now let's discuss how pyruvate metabolism is regulated. The conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA via pyruvate dehydrogenase occurs in many different cells, but as we begin discussing this reaction, let's say this is taking place within skeletal muscle tissue. Notice from the figure that both NADH and acetyl-CoA inhibit 
pyruvate dehydrogenase. You can see that right here. Why is that? Well, let's talk about NADH first. If we were to draw in the TCA cycle right here, we'd notice that a major product is NADH. The NADH is normally used in the electron transport chain to generate ATP when oxygen levels are high. So you could imagine that under hypoxic conditions, the NADH is unable to be used and accumulates within the cell, which then inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase. So hypoxia results in increased NADH because it cannot be used by the electron transport chain and this inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase. You can see that from here, NADH inhibiting pyruvate dehydrogenase. This makes sense. Under hypoxic conditions, you can't utilize acetyl-CoA, so it makes much more sense for the cell to convert pyruvate to lactate. Also notice that when this occurs, the NADH that has accumulated in the cell gets converted back into NAD+. The lactate can then be sent to the liver, where it can be converted back into glucose and used for energy. Another scenario would be that the skeletal muscle cell has excess energy. You could imagine that if the cell had a lot of glucose, it would be funneling pyruvate into the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle would produce NADH, which would then be used by the electron transport chain to generate ATP. Both ATP and NADH are important inhibitors of the TCA cycle. As the TCA cycle is inhibited, the concentration of acetyl-CoA rises. So increased glycolysis results in increased ATP and NADH. This inhibits the TCA cycle, which results in increased acetyl-CoA, and this increases the inhibition of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Or in other words, it decreases pyruvate dehydrogenase. So you can see that the activity of the TCA cycle is primarily what determines the concentration of acetyl-CoA. If the TCA cycle is active, acetyl-CoA will quickly be utilized and the concentration of acetyl-CoA will remain low. If the TCA cycle is inhibited, acetyl-CoA concentrations will rise and pyruvate will be utilized in other metabolic pathways. Okay, you can also see from this figure that acetyl-CoA induces pyruvate carboxylase. Notice that right here. Pyruvate carboxylase is the enzyme that converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate. Recall that the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate primarily occurs in the liver as the first step in gluconeogenesis. So why would high levels of acetyl-CoA promote gluconeogenesis? Well, during periods of fasting, the metabolism of fatty acids through beta-oxidation is upregulated. This makes sense. If you're not eating, then your body breaks down the fat and the liver utilizes it for energy. A product of beta-oxidation is acetyl-CoA. So when acetyl-CoA levels are high, pyruvate carboxylase can operate at maximum capacity. So for example, if a patient is fasting, this will result in increased beta-oxidation, and a product of this is acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA levels will rise, and this will result in increased activity of pyruvate carboxylase. The liver can then funnel glycerol, alanine, lactate, and other substances into pyruvate, which can then rapidly be converted into oxaloacetate for use in the gluconeogenic pathway. Okay, now let's discuss pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency. This is an X-linked disorder resulting in reduced activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase. This results in increased shunting of pyruvate to lactate. There's also some increased shunting to alanine. The increased lactate, however, results in a lactic acidosis. Dietary carbohydrates and amino acids are metabolized to pyruvate, which is then shunted to lactate and results in an exacerbation of lactic acidosis, so worsening of lactic acidosis. Lysine and leucine are used as part of the treatment because these are ketogenic amino acids that bypass pyruvate and can be converted into acetyl-CoA. So if no pyruvate is formed, then it's not shunted to lactate, which means ketogenic amino acids will not exacerbate the lactic acidosis. So no rise in lactate. From the figure, you can see that if amino acids, we'll draw right here, are converted directly into acetyl-CoA rather than pyruvate, then they bypass the possibility of being converted into lactate. Therefore, lactate cannot be formed from these amino acids. Okay, let's reinforce this material with another question. A 43-year-old male presents with a 30-minute history of severe substernal chest pain that radiates to his left arm. An EKG reveals ST segment elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF. Several days after stabilization, 
he is emergently transferred to the ICU in cardiogenic shock. How would the activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase and lactate dehydrogenase likely be altered in this patient? Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient had a myocardial infarction involving the right coronary artery. We can deduce that because he had substernal chest pain and an EKG revealed ST segment elevation in leads 2, 3, and AVF. Several days later, he developed cardiogenic shock as a complication. In cardiogenic shock, the tissues are not perfused adequately, which means the cells do not have enough oxygen and are performing anaerobic metabolism. So shock results in decreased perfusion to the tissues, which results in decreased oxygen, which causes anaerobic metabolism. Recall that in anaerobic metabolism, the conversion of pyruvate to lactate is favored. This occurs by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, so the activity of lactate dehydrogenase must be increased. Conversely, the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is not favored, so the activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase must be decreased. So this will represent pyruvate going to acetyl-CoA. The enzyme that does this is pyruvate dehydrogenase, and the activity of this enzyme will be decreased.